When it comes to the priorities for setting up a diet for recomping, what you want to make sure is, first of all, looking at total energy intake. It's got to be low enough to be compatible with a modest rate of fat loss, but caloric intake cannot be so low as to dramatically blunt hypertrophy. And there was a recent meta-analysis by Murphy and colleagues where they looked at how a certain magnitude of energy deficit impacts hypertrophy potential. And what they found was that as the energy deficit grew by 100 calories a day, uh, the effect size for gains in lean mass did drop um, by about 0 0.03 units. Now, that's practically not very easy to kind of digest, but I think that the key takeaway there is as the deficit got bigger, lean mass gains became more challenging. And as the deficit got up to about 500 calories per day, that was where the regression line predicted a, a full, uh, essentially a full attenuation of gains in lean mass. Now, I'm not saying that that is a generalizable theoretical truth and that no one can gain lean mass in a 500 calorie per day deficit. But that's where the data indicated as you're getting up near 500 calories a day for your deficit, it's going to be pretty tough sledding. So I think that's helpful in kind of dictating the ideal deficit to shoot for. And as an extension of that, kind of what kind of rate of weight loss you, you can potentially be aiming for, uh, you know, as you extend that information out. The other thing you want to focus on, so calorie intake has to be low enough to support some fat loss, but high enough to support uh, gains in lean mass. You also need to make sure that your protein is high enough to support gaining muscle. So in most cases, based on the evidence I'm seeing, 1.6 to 2.2 grams per kilogram of body mass still seems to be a good range there. Nothing wrong with going higher, but uh, there are obviously trade-offs. As protein gets higher, it starts displacing other macronutrients. It starts limiting food choices to some extent. It can make you so full that it's kind of challenging to maintain a diet in some cases. Uh, so 1.6 to 2.2 should be fine in many cases, but since that scaled to total body mass, it can really fall apart when you get to extreme ends of, of body composition ranges, just based on normative data. So, uh, you know, cause th that ultimately that range was calculated based on the typical body comp of the typical study participant. Uh, so pretty much a, a large portion of it is college aged folks and say, Hey, you want to come do a study and make 75 bucks? Like that's pretty much where that, that number is coming from. Yeah. So if you're, really, really lean, um, you know, uh, or, or you're on the higher end of the body fat spectrum, those numbers might not work out as well. In that case, I'd say probably somewhere between two and 2.75 grams per kilogram of fat free mass, just making your best estimate that should put you in a pretty similar range. You can make an evidence-based argument that there are some circumstances where in order for recomping to be feasible, you should bump that up to 2.3 to 3.1 grams per kilogram of fat-free mass. But from the data I've seen, the only situation where that really applies is if you're quite lean or dieting very hard and you're just trying to hang on to some hope of retaining or potentially gaining fat-free mass in the process. But that scenario alone is automatically a bit of a long shot for recomposition. So my recomposition guideline like I said, 1.6 to 2.2 grams per kilogram of total mass or 2 to 2.75 grams per kilogram of fat-free mass. If you're in a physiological state where recomping is feasible, those guidelines should make it happen. If you're in a state where body, body recomposition is not feasible for you, uh, then, then it ain't going to work. Uh, and so that's the reality of the situation. But I think uh, getting back to the perception of the feasibility of recomping, I think it is a goal that is accessible to more people than the average lifter might think.